design in a way we don't often see in New Zealand these days. It follows the principle of sustainable architecture and its aesthetics have won several awards. But a year after its opening, only a few of the tenancies are leased. On the K Road front, all but one are vacant. Is spending money on design a big mistake in the New Zealand property market? The developer has risked a lot of money, and with so many tenancies vacant, you have to wonder whether the risk is paying off. Is this venture a success? Analyzing the social context and the physical environment are the first steps in the process of architectural design. The building sits on a bend on K Road, so the design solution is a narrow entrance on K Road, opening up into a courtyard, leading down to Cross Street. Iron Bank doesn't have a front and a rear. It has two frontages to two very different streets. You could ask, why such a grand entrance on an obscure little alley? You'd expect this to lead you out to a grand public square, or at least something. Instead, it takes you straight to the brothel. Each tenancy is a separate metal box. These are splayed apart so dramatically that they could easily feel cut off from one another. But instead, a converging central plaza unifies the different sections of the complex. Visual communication between tenancies reinforces this idea of unity, not only at ground level, but up the entire height. The result is one object, without the need for enclosed corridors. building in so many different ways. Walk around again and again and you keep discovering different points of view and interesting bits of geometry. If you're working here every day, it takes you a long time to get bored with it. Making a stack of metal boxes, each played apart from one another, creates a dramatic effect. This would have taken a lot of attention at the design stage and added another level of difficulty during construction. Anything out of the ordinary requires more design, more time, 
more care. Even the services shafts are at odd angles. Angles add cost. There's more work involved, standard sizes of materials don't fit. Iron Bank is definitely a one-of-a-kind building. The materials, the geometry, the rusty steel finish is the signature of this project. I really like the lightness and movement of the glass panels. But then, the railings are too heavy and rigid. They seem more like a building code requirement. And those pretty metal ceilings inside. Why have a similar thing on the underside of the external stairs? Repetition can kill a good picture very easily. All in all, I really like Iron Bank. Finally a commercial project that isn't just about profit, but creativity. So, how come the bank is still empty? Is it the recession we're in? Are the tenancies too expensive? Or is Iron Bank just too flash for this part of town? Clay Road is one of the most iconic and colourful streets in New Zealand. To most people, it's the historic home of Auckland's Red Light District. Today, it's the nightclub district and the home of the city's gay scene. By day, K-Rod offers art galleries, tattoo studios, fashion designers, boutique retailers and a host of individuals doing creative work, with some bars and cafes to bring them together. Most of these activities take place in all the buildings. Some of them have been beautifully restored and some need a little bit of TLC. Iron Bank has entered a street that already has a well-defined character. This new kid on the block is a little bit of an extrovert. Are people going to come play with him? I'll see what his dad says. Hi Lara. How are you? Good, thanks. So, tell us about this awesome building. We were really con interested in the contrasting street conditions of the K Road and the uh, cross street side. K Road being a very um, heritage street with lots of I ideas of presentation and build decorative building facades and cross street being a very low grade service lane in a sense which had no architectural consideration. Looking at the buildings that make the fabric of K-Rod, I can see a bit of a departure with Iron Bank from what's already there. Right, yes, well it's quite a different building from even anything else in K-Rod as you'll have noticed. First of all in scale, it's quite a bit taller um, and that's part of the reason why we've broken down the mass of the building into individual parts, into separate towers and then individual boxes. So we got this thoroughfare between K-Rod and Cross Street. Yes, yeah, no, that's, well, that's a central uh, idea of the building, that we wanted to connect these two streets. Um, urban space really doesn't work with a dead end, so um, it needs to have a, a, a destination. It's when you've got that pedestrian flow that people see an opportunity for business and um, so we're really hoping that that street will be catalyzed by this development. Yeah. So what's the potential of Cross Street to become more uh, commercial? I mean you only have to go as far as, as Melbourne and, and some you know obviously a lot of European cities to see retail operating out of far more um, tightly scaled areas than that and I, you know, I think that once once an area starts to develop on a, on a primary street you, you naturally get secondary and tertiary streets opening up after that. Cairo is really the heritage precinct. Mm. Um, it's really in the facade treatment that knits it into the two to three storey scale of heritage buildings on the Cairo side. And, and behind that screen we've relaxed the approach and we've also stepped the scale up um, from three storeys to four to five and to six on the back, on the back towers. So it's about an appropriateness of scale and architectural treatment to the front of the building. So what would be the contribution of Iron Bank to the urban environment? Well, um, I, I guess it's a slightly tricky question to ask. Um, it's already got an immediate contribution, uh, but it really takes people to make things happen. So we're looking forward to seeing the building 
fill up with people. I think if we didn't do projects like this in our city, then the risk is that these sort of streets become like museum pieces that don't really have any real function in today's um, growing city. I admire the knowledge and passion put into making Iron Bank. Visiting the building is an exciting experience. But it isn't a commercial success on the carrot scene. And that's sad because I do want to see more design on our streets, more of this risk taking and new approaches. Maybe Iron Bank is empty because it is in conflict with its context at a social level. Does it suit the demands of the K Road public? At the moment, probably not. But then K Road could easily become gentrified. Maybe that's the bit the developer was taking. Maybe.